So in the past, I have kind of made a big deal about how dealing with transparency in 3D sucks and how I hate doing it. And even more so than that, I have made a big deal about how dealing with transparency in deferred rendering sucks and how I hate dealing with that even more. So today let's talk about doing transparency in deferred rendering. Hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Let's talk about transparency and deferred rendering. What you see in front of you right now is a semi-transparent cube which is being drawn in a deferred scene. And if you look closely at it, you can see that the transparency is behaving correctly. The color is being blended with the stuff in the background. And that's what we're going to set out to accomplish today. So, uh, firstly, some set up the cube itself. Uh, where is it? I was just looking at it. I was just looking at it. Here it is. So, uh, the cube is being loaded from a vertex buffer. It's not super interesting. It's a cube. It's eight points, uh, six faces, 12 triangles, 36 vertices. Each of the corners has a different color. I believe the transparency on each vertex is set to 50%. I set this up a few days ago. I don't remember. So in the actual project that I'm going to be working out of, I, I haven't set it up yet. Uh, what you saw at the beginning of the video was a, uh, a different sample project, which is what we'll be working towards. This is our deferred scene. We remember this from the last deferred renderer video that I made. All right. So if I wanted to draw this in the deferred pass, uh, we could do that by going into the draw event. Let's go down to the bottom. Uh, we can, uh, let's say matrix set, matrix world, uh, matrix build. If I want this to like bob up and down, I can do something like x equals zero, y equals zero. We can take the sign of uh, current time divided by a thousand, multiply that by like 64 or so. Um, if I wanted to rotate randomly, We can take the current time, which is a very handy value containing the number of milliseconds passed since you started the game. Uh, we can take the current time divided by 100 and just assign that on the x, y, and z rotation each. Uh, when we're done drawing, we can matrix set, matrix build identity to put everything back to where it was. I guess I'm already doing that down there. And in the middle, we can vertex submit. Um, VB underscore Q rainbow. The primitive type is PR underscore triangle list. Uh, the texture is negative one. And that is going to give us a bouncing rainbow cubes in the in the middle of the world. Um, let's see, that actually might not be because I think uh, what I forgot to look at is that in deferred G buff, if alpha is less than 0 0.9, we're going to discard. Let's do alpha less than 0.25 discard because again, I think the... Uh, colors on the cube are um, all 50%, 50% transparency. So this isn't really working out properly. Um, it's um, it's bouncing up and down and it's got the colors. And uh, I, I suppose it also has lighting on it. Let me stand over here if you want to really be able to see the lighting. Um, but you'll notice that when it passes over, uh, for example, the tree in the middle or the objects in the background, the lighting on the objects inside or behind it changes. And that is because inside the uh, depth and normal buffers, the depth and normal information of whatever is behind the cube or inside the cube is being replaced by the depth and normal information of the actual face on the cube that it's overwritten. And while the, uh, the diffuse color, the diffuse color is behaving correctly, you can see in the, uh, the diffuse debug surface in the corner, that color blending is behaving as it's supposed to. Um, the lighting of everything that's behind the cube is getting all kinds of screwed up. And um, it occurs to me that maybe if I were to maybe make this not bounce up and down, um, let's just set the, uh, the the vertical position to 32 for the time being and uh, just have this cube stand still uh, and, and maybe rotate on the spot. We can see that the lighting of the tree inside the cube and the lighting of the, um, uh, the mountain in the background and the fog on the mountain in the background that's not behaving properly. So we're gonna have to, if we want to use transparency and deferred renderers, uh, be a little bit more crafty about how we set this up. And there's a few different solutions to this that I've heard postulated over the years. Uh, the one that I'm going to do, because I think it's the most straightforward and the, um, the least amount of arcane trickery is to uh, draw the deferred scene first. Um, instead of drawing, so right now, when I combine the deferred surfaces into into a single scene, that's going directly into the frame buffer, right, in the post draw event. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take another intermediate surface. Uh, let's say self dot combine equals negative one or so. 
Uh, we'll initialize that. Uh, we can, uh, where is pre-draw? Pre-draw is over here. Uh, we can validate our surf combine and pre-draw the same way that we're combining the other parts of the G-buffer. And in post-draw, uh, when we say shader set shader deferred combined, we can also surface set target, um, set that to the combined surface. We can, uh, when we reset the shader, surface reset target. Uh, we actually are going to need to manually draw our surface, so we can draw surface uh, surf combine at zero zero. Don't need to do any um, any scaling uh, shenanigans to it like we are with the other ones. That's going to give us exactly the same thing that we had before, uh, minus the minus the rotating rainbow cube. Uh, because all we're doing now is instead of drawing the combined surface directly to the to the frame buffer, we're drawing the combined like image to a different surface and then drawing the surface to the frame buffer. That's um, you tend to deal with a lot of surfaces when you do deferred rendering. It's just a thing that you have to get used to. Hey. Anyway, when it comes to transparency in 3D and deferred rendering, if you wanted to um, continue drawing on surface underscore combined before you put that in the frame buffer, uh, you're totally allowed to, right? So. After you finish doing the deferred stuff, the deferred combine, but before you do shader reset target, uh, you can keep drawing on top of the surface all you want. You can do whatever you want here. And in my case, what I want to do here is um, draw 3D transparency stuff. So there's a couple things we'll need to set up. So firstly, when you change um, when you change surface targets with either uh, surface set target or surface reset target. Um, the, uh, the 3D camera information will basically get reset to whatever the previous state was. And most of the time that's fine, right? Because that means that you can do things like set your 3D cameras and then it'll go away when you, um, when you draw the application surface and it'll go back to whatever it was. But if I want to continue drawing on the, um, on the combined surface like this in 3D using the 3D camera projection, uh, that we're using in the regular draw event, uh, I'm going to want to... Basically, take the uh, take the camera, uh, reset our view and projection matrices as if we were going to draw in the regular draw event. So we're going to be drawing in our 3D scene. So what we're doing here is we're drawing the 3D scene to the deferred surfaces. We're basically taking a taking a short break to combine it all with um, with lighting and fog and whatnot. And then we're going to resume drawing in 3D to our 3D surface with the um, like with the view and projection matrices that we had before. So within here, we're going to draw some stuff, and then we're going to surface reset target, and then the, uh... Basically, camera settings in Game Maker are like a stack, like the surface stack. Anyway, so if I were to go and take the... the rotating rainbow cube code that I had earlier, uh, if I were to... to just plop that down in here, uh, in the post-draw event, after we reset our camera matrices, and if I were to run the game, uh, this will sort of work. We're going to see some issues. Um, actually, the issues might be easier to see if I were to go back to uh, having it sign up and down. Current time divided by a thousand times 64 amplitude. Uh, the issues might be easier to see if I were to have the cube go signing up and down. And that is that um, even if the cube should be being drawn behind um, things in the 3D scene, it is it is being drawn on top of things in the 3D scene. And that is because um, we are reusing our camera projection that we had going on during our 3D scene, but we are not using the depth buffer. And since the depth buffer is what allows the computer to figure out what should be in front of or behind stuff, uh, that's kind of important. And uh, up until about two months ago, this would have been a really, really hard problem to solve uh, in Game Maker because you would have had to basically, like, Game Maker didn't give you access to the depth buffer until what, the June of 2024 betas. So if you wanted to do depth like this with transparency in 3D, you would have had to basically invent your own depth buffer, which would not have been a lot of fun. Um, but in much the same way that we're, um, uh, for example, allowed to just use the depth texture of another surface when we do our deferred combined pass, uh, we can also take the depth texture from another surface, for example, one of the surfaces that has already been rendered in 3D, and basically transplant that onto our combined surface. And doing that will 
allow us to render stuff in our, uh, in our what I guess I'm going to call the transparency pass while still using the depth information of uh, whatever we were drawing before. Okay. So the way that I'm going to uh, that I'm going to do this is actually a little bit counterintuitive because um, you can only set you can only bind a depth buffer to a surface when you set it as its target, which means that we're going to have to take the somewhat roundabout way of going surface reset target uh, firstly, and this is going to happen like right after the deferred combined pass, but before the transparency pass, and then like immediately after that, I'm going to have to go and reset uh, surface set target to exactly what it was before, which is going to be uh, our combined surface. And the uh, the surface set target function now takes a second optional parameter, which is going to be the depth buffer, um, or specifically a another surface which you want to use the depth buffer of. So in my case, I can use the, uh, the gbuff underscore diffuse um, surface, which has depth information to go with it, as was rendered in the regular draw event during the main render pass and we can take the depth buffer of the um, gbuff underscore diffuse, and we can use that in our transparency pass. Uh, this code is getting a little bit long in spaghetti. After we see that this is working, I will clean it up just a little bit. And this is going to allow us to, uh, we are still not actually, yeah, there's one other thing I have to do here, which is uh, GPU set Z test enable, set that to true, and GPU set Z write enable. Uh, set that to true because that's being reset at the end of the regular draw event and I forgot to, to put that back. Um, this should, um, we also want to reset that when we're done, right? Because when we're not doing, when we're not living in the land with 3D, we don't need um, depth testing and depth writing. So now uh, we have ourselves a 3D bouncing rainbow cube. It exists in 3D space. Uh, it has transparency when it hovers over something that's already been drawn, it doesn't screw up the lighting information on it. Uh, if I were to go and basically pause the bounce once again, um, let's put that at 32 on the Z axis. Uh, if I were to look inside the rainbow cube, we can see that it's um, the, light, the lighting information of the tree inside it is still behaving correctly. The lighting information on the trees behind it is be are behaving correctly. Is, are, I guess it would be is because lighting is singular and trees is never mind um the uh the lighting and fog on the mountains is behaving correctly that one personally to me was the weirdest thing that happened when i was doing this incorrectly earlier is the way that the fog would disappear on the distant mountains so that like sometimes depending on where the camera was you could like see mountains in the distance that you shouldn't have been able to because fog wasn't being processed on them but uh that is Again, perhaps not the only way of doing transparency in 3D in a deferred renderer, but that is, to me, the easiest way of doing transparency in 3D in a deferred renderer. Um, if I were to go, let's see. In some of my, like, 3D video demos, I have separated off, um, like, all of this, all the stuff in the draw event into, like, a draw 3D world function like that. Uh, let me go and create myself a script draw. Actually, you know what? Uh, because we love source control around these parts. All right, because I forgot to initialize the repository before I started recording, uh, I'm going to have to just commit all this at once because I don't feel like I'm doing it. Um, where were we? So let us take, I think, everything from, uh, from where we set the 3D projection I'll leave the calculation of the view mix, the, the view matrix here. So let us take everything from where we set up the 3D projection to basically the bottom of that file. Uh, let us put that in a function called draw 3D world. Um, let us create ourselves a script, uh, draw 3D world. Uh, let us put a space between that function signature and the curly brace because I, it bothers me when it's not there. And uh, let's indent our code because we, we like it when our code looks indented. Uh, let's see, that should be everything. We've got all of our, um, we're setting our camera matrix, we're setting our uh, calling direction, our Z test and Z right, uh, and we're, uh, we're just calling it there. Likewise, we can take everything that is, um, let me take everything from surface, uh, surface set target over here and down to surface reset target, we can call this draw 3D 
transparency. Uh, did I spell that correctly? I have no idea. Uh, draw 3D transparency. Uh, we can get rid of all that. And we can paste our transparency passcode in here. And then we're uh, now we're just calling this function. We're appropriate. And everything should be working the same as before, where we're just putting uh, putting the code in a, in a slightly different place. It also occurs to me that um, backface calling is not enabled on the cube. So from certain points of view, you can see like the interior faces of the cube, depending on the triangle order. So uh, in our in our 3D transparency script, uh, GPU set call mode call uh, counterclockwise. At the bottom of that, uh, GPU set call mode uh, call no calling. And that is going to prevent the uh, the interior back faces of this cube from being rendered. Uh, there is no lighting on this cube currently because I have not set a shader that does lighting calculations on this cube. I have not set lighting uniforms for a shader that does lighting calculations on this cube. And that may very well be something that you want to do yourself, but I'm not going to do it in this video because I've been through lighting calculations throughout these 3D and Game Maker videos so many times that I'm honestly just getting a tiny bit tired of just talking about N.L all day. And if you've gone this far in your 3D adventures in, in Game Maker, you should know you should know how to set up a basic lighting shader from here. I do believe that at least in some games for optimization purposes, um, in a deferred renderer, they will do lighting in the 3D scene as you would expect, but in for transparent objects, they just will not do lighting calculations. Or if they do, they might do a simplified version of lighting calculations and Honestly, that's also totally valid. Uh, that reminds me, by the way, I mentioned this in my original deferred rendering videos, but I think I forgot uh, in the uh, the more recent ones. If you're interested in this kind of thing, uh, there is a YouTuber named Jasper RLZ who occasionally makes videos on uh, rendering tech in Nintendo games. And if you're interested in this kind of thing, I highly would recommend uh, his video on the uh, the cell shading glitch in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It covers a lot of stuff like this in more detail. And if you like this kind of thing, there is a good chance that you would also like his videos. So I'll have a link to that, which you can go and watch if you want to. But I think, uh, I think that's all I really want to do here. Let's see. So we've got, um, we've got our separate transparency pass. We can draw our transparent objects in 3D. That's all good fun. Um, we've organized our code a little bit because this project was in dire need of that. There's a couple more videos I might make on deferred rendering. I would like to kind of do a uh, stress test to see how many lights we can handle in a deferred renderer um, versus in a forward renderer, some, some things of that nature. Uh, somebody asked about doing shadows in a deferred pass because we're doing our lighting calculations in view space instead of in world space. And I, uh, I might make a video on that as well. But otherwise, I think that's going to do it for this video. So my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. I like to post videos on the weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, so if you're interested in 3D stuff or anything like that, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. If you wanted to pledge, I definitely would appreciate it. You should all go check out the Steam page for Wizard X and the Lost Hat, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. I hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.